Okay. It's time for a monthly book haul video. That's right. We hauling. <laughs> We're in it for the long haul. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to kick things off by talking about three books that I bought digitally. The first sure. is All Boys Aren't Blue, a memoir manifesto by George M. Johnson. And this says, in a series of personal essays, prominent journalist and LGBTQIA plus activist George M. Johnson explores his childhood, adolescence, and college years in New Jersey and Virginia. From the memories of getting his teeth kicked out by bullies at age five, to flea marketing with his loving grandmother, to oh. his first sexual relationships, this young adult memoir weaves together the trials and triumphs faced by black queer boys. So I've heard a lot about this book from a lot of other readers, and I was curious about it last year as well. When I saw there was a good deal for it, I was like, obviously going to be buying that. The next book I'm going to talk about was translated actually from French. The book is called A Winter's Promise and it's the first book in the Mirror Visitor Quartet by Christelle Davos. I wonder what that sounds like in French. I honestly have no idea. <laughs> it's about a young woman named Ophelia and she has the ability to read the past of objects apparently and travel through mirrors which I guess that's why it's called the Mirror Quartet. Anyway, she's promised in marriage to a person named Thorn, who is a member of a distant clan, and so she has to leave everything she knows and follow her fiancé to wherever he goes. <laughs> and then while she's there, she realizes that she's not just being married off, but she's actually a pawn in a bigger political game. Yeah. Which sounds interesting. And the last is actually an adult romance called How to Fail at Flirting, and this is by Denise Williams. And the reason I bought this one is because Rachel and DJ told me to. <laughs> <laughs> and the one line... And usually when they do, it's worth it. It's true. So the one-line description says, One daring to-do list and a crash course in flirtation turn a type A overachiever's world upside down. Ah. Uh. I honestly don't remember the full details of this one. I just, when those two tell me to read something, I'm just like, sure. Yep. And so when I saw this one was also, you know, there was a good deal for it. I was like, all right, I'm going to buy it as well. Digital purchases for me are done. What about you? All my purchases are usually digital. And we're going to start with some comics, right? Sure. The Dawn of X, volumes 12 and 13, finally dropped. Mm. I pre-ordered just about everything. I'm some volume, I want to say 16. I would be which, shocked if you did. Right, which follows the merry adventures of the X-Men and how they're, how yeah, all the mutants, and how all the mutants are now navigating being a world superpower, whilst at the same time dealing with things like, oh, I don't know, another alien invasion that is going to end the entire universe, so, so to speak, which happens in the Marvel universe every two years terrible terrible place to live if you really think about it and even worse if you're a mutant but not so much lately until x of swords which is the next series that is happening under the dawn of x you know sort of saga are the mutants no longer on their front foot anymore we'll see all right moving forward toff beifong's metal bending academy i think this is going to be one in the so we just recently katara's little bit was released now yes. we've got toff i know there's a suki one coming up oh nice. so this might be sort of like little one shots that they're going to release and maybe collect i'm just predicting I, I in the same surprised. right in the same way that they sort of have like the rift versus one two three and they just sort of have the collected edition the library edition which hey either way i know that the hardcover like edition is going to end up on our shelf at one point in time. oh for sure and if can, 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 anyone else is wondering it's about toff's metal bending academy <laughs> but twist she's bored out of her freaking mind i would kind of not surprised i any i would read anything from the avatar Me series too. and that's probably why they've made avatar studios Woo! anyway other things other things hints are kind two and three because I read number one on Comixology, and I needed to find out about two and three. Why, you ask? Because it's about a post-apocalyptic world where humans are destroyed by a virus, and the last remnants and survivors, specifically a, a little conclave living in the middle of Central Park, just happens to stumble upon the larger world out there and discovers that, hey, guess what? This whole time we were trying to survive in a world thinking there's just us. Oh no, the myths have come back. Anything from ogres and like skinlings and you know goblins and fairies to actual full-fledged she from the from from Irish sort of like fae you know like mythology they're out there they're in charge now we're just caught in the middle totally beautiful story you should totally read it Once in Future Volume Two by Karen Yellen because I read Once in Future Volume One Arthurian and the Legend just think about it this way set this picture it Britain. Bunch of nationalists stumble across an artifact that will resurrect an ancient evil tyrant from Arthurian mythological lore, in which Bridget McGuire responds and escapes from her nursing home and decides to bring her grandson Duncan along for the ride because apparently she's the person to, you know, get the job done. Couple more things. Red Thorn 2, Mad Gods and Scotsman by David Bailey. Again, it's about 
gods and ancient gods sort of wake it up and you know this time Scottish ones anyway the gods of Alba they're pretty cool a young girl discovers how her sister disappeared and what crazy magical powers that are actually within her actually are for and what they could do so this is part two of that totally really fun lastly and my easily next to hinterkind my personal favorite of my comics haul something is killing the children i like your locks. it's easily my favorite <laughs> by james tanian the fourth because it takes all of the boxes of my childhood love for horror films it's a story about a young boy who has witnessed the murder of all of his friends everybody thinks he did it he knows he didn't do it he was there and the only thing that did do it Nobody else can see except him until a until a young wo girl woman sort of mm -hmm. strolls into town with a mysterious background that says, "I can see it. Let's go kill it." That something that's killing the children is gonna get killed, and I want to find out what happens in book two. All right, that ends my comic haul. Okay, now nice we'll and talk sweet. about physical things that I bought. So first, we'll tackle three pre-orders. I want to say so. The first is the graphic novel adaptation of Alexandra Bracken's debut novel, Brightly Woven. I actually have the hardcover of that which is a little hard to find now. It's somewhere on our shelf. Brightly Woven is about a girl who has weaving magic. Nice. And she is tasked with helping this wizard named Waylon North to get to the capital so that he can deliver some important news. He needs someone who is able to help mend his traveling cloaks, if I remember correctly. Sure. And so these two have to contend with all the shenanigans that come when someone is trying to prevent you from getting to your destination. I'm sure. curious to see how this one plays out because I think they actually age the characters down. Oh, okay. So, so I'd be curious to see. Like, I think she's still a teenager, but she's a younger teenager in this like story. 14, 13. Like I think that. so, yeah. So that'll be interesting to see. And then I have another copy of a book that I already talked about. This is the indie specific edition of The Mask Falling by Samantha Shannon, which is the fourth novel in the Bone Season series, which is a series I absolutely love. You guys already know that. It's set in a, I guess, Gorgeous future color. dystopic sort of world where clairvoyants are a thing and they're also being hunted down because they're considered unnatural and you know people want to control them only it turns out there's actually a bigger force than just mere humans pulling the strings and you find that out in book one and this has been this is four books in so i'm not going to tell you the exact summary of this one but suffice to say it was so intense such a great reading experience though Awesome. And the last thing I have to mention, which you Certainly see every so often, least. is the seventh, I want to say, yep, seventh volume of the collector's edition of Card Captor Sakura. Ooh, Card Captor Sakura. It's so go. pretty. I just love these editions so much because the aesthetic is so perfect. The irony is that my, like, on the day that my Amazon, like, e like email came in saying, we've got a new Card Captor, like, volume, like, this comes in the mail and let's say, yeah, that one's mine. I'm just like, you're fast. Of course I'm fast. <laughs> but keeping on with the manga, I actually went to Kinokuniya twice in the last month. So first I have the fourth volume of Witch Hat Atelier, which I have not read yet. This is by Kamome Shirahama. Haven't read this series yet, but honestly, I just can't resist the aesthetic of it because it looks... It is pretty. It looks it's like it's really going to be cute. Studio Ghibli-esque. That's how it feels to me anyway from the vibes I'm getting, so that's why I have it. I also bought volume four in Dream and Sun, which is by Ichigo Takano, and I actually have read the first three volumes of this series and really enjoyed it. It's about a girl who... She kind of feels like she can't live with her parents anymore and she gets offered housing by this random dude she meets and helps out and she ends up living in this house with him and two other people. And then this is a volume one that I picked up on a whim. It's Waiting for Spring, which is by, it says, Anashin, which I, sure. I know nothing about this book except that the girl in it is kind of a wallflower until she gets to know some of the members of her school's basketball team. Sure. It's literally all I know about it, so... We'll see how that goes. On this outing with Rachel also, I bought a few other things. And she also gave me two things. So let's talk about the two things she gave me first. So she decided she wasn't gonna keep these copies and I wanted them so I could read them. I'm not sure if I will end up keeping them either. This is The Darkest Star and then this is The Burning Shadow. And these are two books in the, oh my goodness, I can't even remember what it's called. It's the spin-off series for the Lux series. I read the first one, really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to reading the rest of it because I do want to know how things turn out. I have always enjoyed the Lux series by Jennifer Armentrout. I'm pretty sure I can confidently say that that's probably my favorite series from her because I've reread it multiple times. It's about aliens, which is like an anomaly for me because I don't really read books about aliens, but I really enjoyed those books. So I am looking forward to reading the rest of this. And then I bought the rest of these books. So first is Beneath the Moon, Fairy Tales, Myths, Ooh. and Divine Stories from Around the World. And the art is by Yoshi Yoshitani, whose That's aesthetic gorgeous. I love. Like, the illustrations in this are so pretty. But anyway, it's a collection of myths and fairy tales. 
obviously wasn't going to pass that up. I also have The Deep, which is by River Solomon, and it says, With the Diggs, William Hudson, and Jonathan Snipes. And this is basically about a main character named Yatu, and she, it's sort of like mermaids, but basically they are descended from the pregnant African slave women who are thrown overboard by their oh, slave God. owners, wow. and that's why they live in the deep. Yetu is kind of the one who holds the memories for all her people, so I think the book dives into that. And I love this edition of it. It's very, very pretty and eye-catching. Sounds like a really serious read, though. Still looking forward to reading it as well. Speaking of serious reads, I finally caved and bought A Little Life by Hanya Yanigehara. This is a book that I've heard about multiple times from multiple people and it sounds like it's going to be an extremely intense reading experience because it chronicles the lives of four friends in new york city over a period of time my friend rachel has read it and liked it a lot she cried my cousin carmela has read it and liked it a lot she cried i am slightly terrified that i will also cry when i'm reading this book but i do really want to read it and the last book I got actually because my sister Rachel read it before I did which is unusual because she doesn't read as much It's a book called Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu <laughs> Kawaguchi And this is basically set in a cafe where for the time that you're in the cafe You can actually time travel to oh. the past moment Oh, that's right, yeah Yeah, and it sounds so interesting and so fascinating and I'm really looking forward to checking that out I also, in preparation for getting the special covers that a company called Nerdy Inc. is doing for this series. I caved, also got new editions of The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien, as well as the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I have seen these editions before, and to be fair, if I had more space, I probably would have already bought them before. <laughs> but now I caved because Nerdy Inc. is doing a special edition of the covers. That, that If you've seen my Throne of Glass covers, you'll probably know the aesthetic that they're doing, and I love them, so I needed these books, and that's why I ended up buying them. There we go. <laughs> I like how my explanations like that's why I did it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm not mad about it. It's been a while since I've revisited The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings trilogy, and I'm kind of tempted to do it, even though that's also a time commitment because they're long. It's an emotional commitment. We'll see. Gracious. We'll see. <laughs> I have always enjoyed that world that Tolkien has created, Tolkien has created. I, it would be fun to revisit it again as an adult, honestly. I haven't had the chance to do that yet. I forgot one more because it was already set on a different pile of books. But I did get a finished copy, obviously, of A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Maas. This is the latest in her A Court of Thorns and Roses series. It's Nesta Archeron's story. It's bloody brilliant. I think that's all I really want to say about it. If you're a fan of this series and this world, you will definitely enjoy this book. It's a great installment. It's a great lead into what is coming next in this world and ah. series. So I'm very, very excited to own it. This is the Books A Million edition. So it has a bonus or scene at the end we. that features one other character named Az. It's so good. I just, I screamed, I laughed, I cried. I yelled a lot while I was reading this. Sounds good. It was great. So what did you buy? Alrighty, I... Digital. <laughs> of course, as, as mentioned earlier. So we're going to start with Death Goddess Dance by Levi Black. It is the third book in his, I want to say, Mythos Wars trilogy. Okay. It centers on a young girl who, after some terrible traumatic experiences, finds herself being chosen as the red right hand of an old one. Mm -hmm. One of the sort of elder gods or... Not so elder, but elder enough, in in the third of the Cthulhu mythology, mm -hmm. and so that's a, that's always fun. So it's a great spin on an old sort of like well loved universe. So there's that, and then we've got Daylight by David Baldacci, which is the third book in the Atlee Pine series. Oh my and gosh, I haven't heard you talk about that. I in know a while. it's been a while because I haven't finished book two. It's sort of dragging a little bit for me. Atlee is a detective who was once sort of like special force of the type of deal or well or maybe not special force but the point is she's like super special in like the cop in army sort of like genre. that's so specific I like sorry that's so vague but she's super special she's still on a mission to try to find who did you know who who kidnapped her sister and and, and made her twin sister disappear ages and ages ago okay. she thinks it's a serial killer that she in every book tries to sort of like an encounter but the serial killer totally has the upper hand on her because he's just like i've got nothing to lose and you do so mm. toying with her the third book hopefully will bring a resolution to that but at the same time crosses over and i love david baldacci it makes me want to google the baldacci verse where it actually crosses over <laughs> with baldacci. with somebody who is a detective for the army i did read his books john puller okay you know, he was he's he's a detective. Mm. He's sort of like military police, and I've followed his extensive sort of like book series. Super cool. Involved his dad, who was sort of like a retired sort of like general, and his brother, who was you know arrested for treason 
or was he? So it was just, it's really good stuff. It's one of the few books that I read that don't involve like dragons or vampires or magic or any other kind of True. supernatural aspect to it. It's just straight up just like normal people doing extraordinary things mm -hmm. within a military setting. So that's kind of cool. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children and an entire series. Okay. The first three books went on sale. So that would be obviously Home for Peculiar book. Children, the titular book. You've got Hollow City book two and then Library of Souls book three. You've read those, yeah. Totally. Had them on my shelf. Bought them at like two book two BAs ago. But they sold for like a dollar ninety nine at the time. So I'm just like, yeah, each. I'm like, yeah, I'm finally collected because I do have books four and five on my Kindle as well, so I thought might as well collect the entire thing, it's cheaper, and I did buy the last book, which is A Desolation of Devil's Acre. Okay. Totally awesome. Ransom Riggs has done an amazing bang-up job of this sort of like semi- it's like Tim Burton, but less Tim Burton-y, if that's even a thing. I guess. In terms of vibe and feel and resonance. It's that sure. sort of like bizarre arabesque kind of, mm. you know, old-time carnival sure. sort of like, you know, deal, right? Which, it, that that specific type of old-timey whimsy that is deeply rooted in, you know, like suburban, you know, kind of like zeitgeist of the time. Anyway, as, as the exotic, whatever. Finally, and certainly not least, A Betrayer by Nicole Conway, which is Aww. book two of the Dragon Rider Heritage series. I have a tendency to binge read Nicole Conway's books from the time that I first stumbled upon her books sure. about a young half-elf named Javid, who eventually becomes such a figurehead in the little sort of like kingdom that he has where people ride dragons in, the, in, in them parts and this takes place several hundred years after well not a hundred several hundred but a couple of hundred like years well about a hundred years less than a hundred years but almost close after sort of like Javen's time continuing the episode and it's I think her third saga I want to say I honestly can't remember I love it I love I love her stuff so I am totally reading her thing now we're gonna move on to the review copies and all the other stuff that Lovely publishers, publishers so generously sent. sent us. So I'm going to start with the digital haul that I have, and I don't know how to pronounce this word, and I'm sure I'm going to pronounce it wrong, so you tell me. Arsenic, Arsenic? and adobo? Arsenic. Yeah, of course I pronounce it adobo like the way we do it in the Philippines. So. <laughs> yeah, so it's Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Manansala, and I also pronounced it. Oh, it's Philippine? Okay, cool. I thought yeah. it was like the Mexican I also pronounced kind of it like... <laughs> the way we would pronounce it. And this is a digital copy that I got thanks to the Berkeley Publishing Group. So, this is actually a cozy mystery. It's the first in a new culinary cozy series full of sharp humor and delectable di dishes. One that just might be killer. Although, to be fair for those of you who have eaten adobo, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great way to hide arsenic. Okay, I'm just saying, so it like, says, just when Lila Makapagal moves back home to recover from a horrible breakup, her life seems to be following all the typical rom-com tropes. She's tasked with saving her Tita Rosie's failing restaurant, and she has to deal with a group of matchmaking aunties who shower her with love and judgment. <laughs> but when a notoriously nasty food critic, who happens to be her ex-boyfriend, drops dead moments after a confrontation with Lila, her life quickly soars from a Nora Ephron romp to an Agatha Christie case. With the cops treating her like she's the one and only suspect, and the shady landlord looking to finally kick the Makapagal family out and resell the storefront, Lila's left with no choice but to conduct her own investigation. Armed with a nosy auntie network, her barista best bud, and her trusted Dachshund, Longanisa, Lila takes on this tasty twisted case and soon finds her own neck on the chopping block. And oh my gosh, I'm so excited to read this book. It sounds like it's going to be so much fun. So many pop culture illusions. Is My brain is exploding, but very well. Carry on. <laughs> From Gallery Books, I got the approval for The Soulmate Equation, which is Christina Lauren's upcoming book. Nice. This is a witty and effervescent novel about what happens when two people with everything on the line are thrown together by science. Or is it fate? It says sure. perfect for fans of The Rosie Project and One Plus One. Cool. Single mom Jess Davis is a data and statistics wizard, but no amount of number crunching can convince her to step back into the dating world. Raised by her grandparents, who now help raise her daughter, Jess has been left behind too often to feel comfortable letting anyone in. After all, her father's never been around, her hard partying mother disappeared when she was six, and her ex decided he wasn't father material before Juno, her daughter, was even born. So Jess holds her loved ones close, but is working constantly to stay afloat by herself. Cool. Then she hears about Genetically, which is a new DNA-based matchmaking service that's predicted to change the dating landscape forever. Sure. <laughs> Finding a soulmate through DNA is, you know, the reliability of numbers that appeals to her and so she decides that she's gonna take part. Crazy, in right? This. It sounds like a great premise and I do really enjoy Christina Lauren's book, so 
that'll be really fun. From Random House, I think, from Knopf Books for Young Readers, I got the approval for Six Crimson Cranes, which is by Elizabeth Lim. The description, one line description is, a princess in exile, a shape-shifting dragon, six enchanted cranes, and an unspeakable curse. Six enchanted Drawing from cranes. the wild swans in East Asian folklore, this breathtakingly original fantasy from the author of Spin the Dawn is perfect for fans of Lee Bardugo or Tomi Adiemi. Listen, I just needed all of those tiny details, like first, an exiled princess, a shape-shifting dragon, and it's based on the six swans, the wild swans story. Here for it, so I'm gonna be reading that. And the last digital copy is from Abrams Kids. It's actually by my friend Margot Wood. It's her debut novel, Fresh, and it is actually a retelling of Emma, but it's set at Emerson University, and it is about a freshman who is going to Emerson University. And I'm really excited to read Margot's What's debut up, novel. Margo? It's gonna be so fun, so great. And now we're gonna move on to the sort of physical review copies arcs that I got. So from Berkeley, we have The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary. And this one says, two exes reach a new level of awkward when forced to take a road trip together in this endearing and humorous novel by the author of the international bestseller, The Flat Chair. And then the tagline is, what if the end of the road is just the beginning? Wow. <laughs> Can't stand it. I love the premise of this so much. Okay, forced proximity. There you go. All Second right. chance romance. Here we go. We're here. Here we go. From Simon and Schuster, they sent me a few finished copies. So first we have A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Namey. Laura? Yeah, Laura Taylor Namey. And it says, For Lila Reyes, a summer in England was never part of the plan. The plan was, one, take over her abuela's role as head baker at their panaderia, move in with her best friend after graduation, that was number two, and three, live happily ever after with her boyfriend. But then the trifecta happened and everything, including Lila, fell apart. So her parents are worried about her mental health and they decide to send her over to England to spend the summer with family friends and to hopefully, you know, reset everything. But with the lack of sun, a grumpy inn cook, and a small town lacking Miami flavor, what would be a dream trip for others feels more like a nightmare to Lila until she meets Orion Maxwell. Orion Maxwell. So, you know, I'm here for it. I'm Very ready. Very well. And then we have an equally pink cover, Rent a Boyfriend by Gloria Chow, which I've actually talked about before. So this is about Chloe Wang, and she's kind of nervous because her parents expect her to be dating the ideal boyfriend. And so she decides to reach out to this company called Rent For Your Rents, which specializes in providing fake boyfriends trained to impress even the most traditional Asian parents. Drew is Terrible. the fake boyfriend assigned to her. And let's just say it goes from fake dating to, ooh, we got real feelings real fast. <laughs> I'm sure. so excited to read this book because it just sounds like it's gonna be delightful. Sure. And then we have Recommended For You, which is by Laura Silverman. So this is what this looks like. And the reason I wanted this one is because it's set at a bookstore. So there are two employees at this bookstore and they are on a mission to outsell each other, like to sell the most number of books. And it just sounds super cute. Can't wait to check it out. From Penguin Teen, they generously sent two things. First is an actual physical arc of Winter Keep by Kristin Kashore, which is the newest Graceling Realm book. Don't know what the plot is about. I know it's still a centers around Bitter Blue, but other than that, I don't know the plot and I don't want to know because I actually haven't read Bitter Blue yet, so. Fair. But this cover is fantastic. And then we have an arc of Luck of the Titanic by Stacey Lee. It's about two twins. They are on the Titanic, I think. Yeah, they are on the Titanic. Obviously, tragedy is going to ensue at some point, but it will be interesting to see this tragedy through the light of an Asian viewpoint because I don't think I've ever seen that before, especially because they're Asian twins. So that'll be interesting. So what did you want to talk about that we got? A couple of things. So Peachtree, lovely as always, sent us something by Jenna Gillam. Gillam? That's terrible. Probably Guillaume. Better than Guillaume. You were made for me. Think of sort of like a reversal trope of that old sort of like weird science movie where a couple of boys make like the perfect woman. Yes. Which is like already a terrible premise. But I think here it's sort of like two girls creating like the perfect guy. And I believe at the very center of this book, theme or essence is just like what is that going to do to their friendship like based and and what does that do that. and what does it do for the like their self-image if this boy like respond you know it's kind of thing so <laughs> so there is that interesting sort of like take to it so it's in the my wheelhouse there's a reason like there, there's a reason why it's on my side of the pile and not alexis this last one on, on my end is by marlene perez it or perez what the afterlife of the party and it's a vampire book this young girl and her best friend go to like a party easily the worst party of her entire life but some but like the band bites her and she wakes up as a vampire totally terrible and the lead singer or whatever the band just makes you know makes off 
with her best friend. And so she's now trailing a bunch of vamps with, you know, like so unlikely allies just to get her best friend back. This 100% sounds like I would have, I would have, like this is totally, I would have done either of these things. I would have either been the reluctant one of the party and wakes up and I'm like, ah, oh, I have to drink blood. And then my best friend is gone, or I would have been the bandmate. It was just like, we're going to take that girl. It's going to be so funny. All right. So the last Alrighty. portion of this video, as usual, is going to be the box portion. So the first one is this box, which has muted on the cover. And that is because the title of the book in it is muted. Surprise, surprise. This is from Scholastic, I want to say. So we have... Ooh, oh, it's a cassette pretty. tape. Oh, it's like a wallet. Wallet. It's like a cassette tape wallet on the back. You'll probably see that there. On the front, it had... I guess it must be the title of some of the chapters. Because it has a side A and side B with like a track list there. I've not seen... And then it has... It's really pretty. It's like rose gold. It's gorgeous. And then... Oh, there's a wire, wirelessly rechargeable Bluetooth speaker. Cool. Oh, hey. Oh, look how cute it is. It's so tiny. It's, it's a, like a tiny Bluetooth speaker. It is tiny. Tiny. It's so cute, though. It's practically an earbud. Yeah. So the book in the box is obviously called Muted, and it's by Tammy Charles. And it says, be bold, oh, get yes. seen, be heard. For 17-year-old Denver, music is everything, writing, performing, and her ultimate goal, escaping her very small, very white hometown. So Denver is more than ready on the day she and her best friends, Dali and Shaq, sing their way into the orbit of the biggest R&B star in the world, Sean Mercury Ellis. Ooh. Merc gives them everything, parties, Merc. perks, wild nights, plus hours and hours in the recording studio. Even the painful sacrifices and the lies the girls have to tell are all worth it, until they're not. Denver begins to realize that she's trapped in Merck's world, struggling to hold on to her own voice. As the dream turns into a nightmare, she must make a choice, lose her big break, or get broken. Sounds like it's going to be an intense... Oh, Under the dust jacket surprise! Look at that! It has That's clouds cool. and a plane on it. So yeah, I, I am very interested in reading this one. I've heard a few people have read it and actually really liked it, so... Definitely That's checking great. that out. I also got this pretty big blue box. I know what's in it. <laughs> I just gotta be careful here so you guys don't see. So, the arc that's in it is actually a book called Tokyo Ever After by Emiko Jean, and this came from Flatiron Books. So it says, Meet the Lost Butterfly, aka Her Imperial Highness Princess Izumi. Oh. Izumi Tanaka has never really felt like she fit in. It isn't easy being Japanese American in her small northern California town. Raised by a single mother, Izumi has always felt like it's been her and her mom against the world. But then she discovers a clue to her previously unknown father's identity, and he's none other than the crown prince of Japan. Which means that uh -oh. outspoken, irreverent Izumi is literally a princess. So she travels to Japan <laughs> to meet a father she never knew and to discover the country she's always dreamed of visiting. But obviously being a princess isn't all about the ball gowns or the tiaras. There are conniving cousins, the hungry press, a scowling but handsome bodyguard who just might be her soulmate. I'm already here. Here we Thank go. You. And thousands of years of tradition and customs to learn practically overnight. Soon Izumi finds herself caught between worlds and between versions of herself. Will she crumble under the weight of the crown or live out her hap fairy tale happily ever after? Oh my gosh, it sounds like it's gonna be so much fun! And I like the paper cut cover style too. You mean the weight of this crown? Yeah, look, there's a tiara in here. Oh, and this is like a, what do you call it? A scandal sheet. And then it has the family tree on the back. That's cool. There That's is. Cool. Ooh, sticker. Tiny sticker, actually. Oh, Pocky! The best thing ever! Make sure there's not enough. There's oh my god, look! It's a little, it's a little bear oh, squishy. Oh, it's squishy! Yes, there's so much um, stuff in here. But yeah, it sounds like it's gonna be such a fun book. And I love. Oh, there's another sticker. Anyway, it sounds like it's gonna be such a fun book. I like the whole royalty aspect. I'm so excited. Thank you so much to the publisher for both those boxes. So, got a fairy loot box. And the reason I got this box will become very clear momentarily. So you're just gonna have to wait. Ooh, that's gorgeous. So, first. We're just gonna go through like all the things in this box. I think there is a card. So, so you show them what it is. This is like a cooking, yeah. like, so it, I don't know what it's called, but I use one of these and I love these. And it says, It is a wooden Did you know, spatula. A wooden spatula. Did you know food is infinitely more scrumptious when you're in love? And that's a quote from Lovely War by Julie Berry, which is a book I absolutely love. It's also great when you're heartbroken. The design is by KDP Letters and it's so cute and it's functional too. Like that's something we could actually use. I am yeah. definitely using this thing. Then there's this. And then there is, you can take ooh. out. I believe that's a trinket dish, but you're gonna have to take it out so we a can A trinket see. dish. Oh, hell, hello, it is gorgeous. Look Let's at that. Keep oh, it in, I love it. It's, yeah, it's it Eros psyche. and Psyche, yep. Or Eros and Psyche, yeah, sure. Yes, and the illustration's by Tara, so, oh, it's so pretty. It's got that nice little Greek okay. sort of like. Let's mm. see what else is in here. We have a book sleeve. 
Oh, hey, what does it say? Oh, well, you can be the one to show it off. But in a solitary life, there are rare moments when another soul dips near yours as the stars once a year brush the earth. That's a great quote. This is from Circe by Madeline Miller, and the design is by Chatty Nora. So love that book sleeve. It's great. Gorgeous, my gosh. Okay, I don't know what's in this tiny envelope, but we are going to find out. find out for us. It is... Oh! Okay, it's an iron-on patch, and it is illustrated by... It says Aliesa's World, so it's basically the cover of the book, honestly. It's a Medusa iron on patch, which we will find out later what this is, but you probably already You mean know. Medusa, a Gorgon, usually put on a shield? I wonder. <laughs> and now in another sealed fairy loot envelope. I actually have no idea what that is, but I guess we're about to find out. It is a bookmark. Ooh. I think it's a bookmark. I wonder what it's designed like. Oh, that's Of the stunning. goddess Athena. Oh my gosh, that's stunning. So it's a monolime art that design. Bitch. And it's an enamel bookmark. And it's so stunning. I love that bookmark so much. So we have the collectible tarot cards, which come pretty much every month. This time the art is, Just so happens is to for be. The Wrath and the Dawn. And it was by ARZ28. Actually, the next item in the box is one of my favorite things. I actually saw it already when I was sort of like going through the box myself. It is this gorgeous... Gorgeous print, also by ARZ28. It's Percy and Annabeth. Any Perkabeth fans out I there? I love them. I'm so soft on them. These two look like they're in college. I mean, they should be at this point. Yep. Last but not least, we obviously have the book in here. And if you haven't already guessed what it is, I'd be a little surprised. Because, you know. Well, for those of you who know, who know us, but for those of you who don't, it's lore by but, but, Alexandra Bracken. But, 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 but. So let's show them the entire thing. So show so them. Let's, so this is so this the, is the, the front. front. So, so no Gorgon medallion just there yet. Yeah. Because they save that for the back. Yes. Right? And it because says hunt or be hunted. Hunt or be hunted, alluding to the Aegon. Mm -hmm. But look at the side. The so it has this print on this side. It also has it on the other side, but and it in also a nice has it, like foil. Gold foil. And then if you open it, which all, right. all of the so, like papers and stuff are in here. So you've got this nice kind of like gold marbling yep. uh, kind of going mm -hmm. on for you there. But, ah, the shield. It's so pretty. And then the spine also says something. It has a quote. It says, the, the games, games have, have begun, begun and, and she's, she's playing, playing for her for life. Her life. That and is then close. there's also a design on the back. And then a design on the back is like this nice Greek kind of like whatever. There's like so many things happening here. But let's but let's talk about this. Let's I, talk okay. about this. Can I just this. say, Can we please this freaking under the dust jacket talk design about this is for so a beautiful. moment. It's by Liz Art underscore Zardonix. I will put that in the I am box. so it's into this. Stunning! I love it so I am much. So and if into you know, this. you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. I need a digital print of this right? thing if we can uh, get one. There's also this character art print where the letter that Alex wrote to readers is on the back of it too. Oh gorgeous. Um, and this is by Running Quill Art. So it's beautiful. You guys already know that we actually really love lore. Like we thought it was so much fun. It, it, uh, uh, Alex Bracken makes me want to be a writer. I know, she's she's such a great writer. We love Laura, obviously excited to have that edition. But we also have one more exciting package and we got it in the mail and I s promise you the first thing that happened when we saw it, you were like <gasps> just, just like heavy breathing and like just nigh manic excitement. And if you can't tell by this symbol already, this is a box for, I'm pretty sure, yep, it's for a Cassandra Clare book. I wonder which one. Gee, what does it doesn't even say? say. It says you never forget your first betrayal. So which, who this, doesn't really? this is for obviously Chain of Iron, which is the second book in the Last Hour series. And look at the bottom of the box. It's got Chain of Iron mm -hmm. and Chain of Gold too, which is so magnificent. So in the box you get paper dolls for James Arendale <laughs> and Cordelia Carstairs. Pretty cool, right? But you also get this really cool DIY embroidery kit where it has the quote, all the stories are true, and then you can pick the rune that you want to embroider, which I will be doing. But most importantly and most exciting, it also contained an ARC copy of Chain of Iron, which we lost our minds over a little bit and immediately proceeded to read, which threw off any reading plans we might have had. <laughs> and it was so good. By the time this video goes up, you'll probably have seen our non-spoilery review of it. Again, just gonna say, you can keep an eye out for the more spoilery thoughts, which will be a hybrid 
bookish breakdown podcast episode, but also a video that we're gonna upload. It's to like a channel. crossover between like Fandom Buzz and uh, Alexa Loves Books. So we'll be recording be the podcast and filming ourselves. Like if you thought we were excited in the non-spoiler review, you haven't seen anything oh, yet. Oh boy, like that, we I, we realized that after the non-spoiler review, like we said nothing. We literally said nothing at all. None, no specifics. And so it's just, it's just going to be long. But yeah. It's probably going to be two parts too. It, we'll maybe. see. We'll see. But yeah, that is the end of this book haul. It's a great it was a haul. great haul for February. Good, there were a lot of exciting things that came for us. We hope you enjoyed this video and we would love to hear what you guys acquired in February. Did you get any of the new releases? Are you excited for any of the books that we mentioned in the video? Let us know in the comments. And if you want to chat on, with us on any other social media, all that is down there too. Yeah. And we'll see you guys with a new video soon. Bye. Bye.